Good afternoon, class. This week we're going to be uh, starting a new section in the Thinking Socratically book called Reasoning About Values. It begins on chapter 12, and it begins with chapter 12, and is called The uh, Nature of Morality, and that's what we're going to be looking at. You're given uh, two articles, and you're given a brief excerpt from uh, uh, Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karmatsin. And um, it, they, they give you a really brief excerpt from the rebellion chapter. And I would like to provide some context to that because they do ask a few questions about that. And as I was listening um, to uh, audio of the rebellion chapter and I was rereading it, I thought, well, you, you I wanted you to get the, the um, full context of, of this passage because it's just, it's just an odd uh, uh, part of the passage, there's a general, and he uh, sends his dogs to uh, to to um, kill a child by uh, by uh, the dogs tear the child apart. It's pretty gruesome, and and I want to sort of supply a greater context to the uh, how it relates to the nature of morality. Uh, so I'll be asking one different question from you, and um, for, to be completed um, uh, by the end of the week. How does this story influence philosophical questions concerning the nature of morality? So, so it's pretty basic um, in, in a general sense, but then you're given liberty to sort of elaborate on how, how you um, feel that it does do this. I've also on the Canvas website included the audiobook for the Rebellion chapter, and uh, I encourage you uh, in this order to first listen to this video, and I'll post this in the Canvas, and then after listening to this video, listen to the rebellion chapter and uh, and then uh, answer the question. That that order, I think, will uh, work best. So first, and this isn't really captured in the brief passage, right? Where, where um, the passage and the question after um, worrying is worrying about the subjectivity of morality or moral relativism is something that we think is wrong um, wrong always and everywhere. And that's a that's a, a very um important philosophical question. But let me let me sort of provide a bit more of the uh of the uh, context to the rebellion chapter. So first is is why is it called rebellion? That's right at the end of the uh chapter. There's two brothers that are talking. Uh one is a monk and the other is um to a certain degree uh, a skeptic. Um and, and we'll we'll um explore why and um, at the end, uh, Ivan, who, who is the skeptical one in the conversation, says, I want to give back my admission ticket. And um, the other brother, the monk, um, uh, uh, Osha, I don't think I'm pronouncing that name entirely right, uh, uh, Yosha, is, is, uh, says that's rebellion. And it's important to try to um, uh, know what that means before answering the question. So... Uh, what uh, what this um, chapter is describing is is uh, is trying to make sense of perhaps among other things uh, the idea of uh, is there any justification for evil, and so that philosophically often translates into the uh, idea of theodicy, which is a justification for an all powerful all uh, knowing perfectly good God, uh, given the concept of evil. And um, and how Ivan approaches this question is by um, sort of reducing the idea of evil to uh, the evil experienced uh, by, uh, by children. So he talks about uh, children suffering, and he goes into a variety of, of detailed uh, um, scenarios or stories on that. The one of the last one of which is the um, brief excerpt of the passage that the uh, thinking Socratically text uh, gave, and his justification for doing that is the uh, the innocence of of the child. He feels that that um, in in one sense um, makes them immune to. Um, sort of philosophical things that might, uh, reasons that might say, oh, uh, a person is being punished for something they did. He, he finds that the child is innocent, so that, that wouldn't work in, in that situation. The first time I read um, the, uh, the rebellion chapter in, in, uh, in um, the Brothers Karmatsa, 
I, it was about 20 years ago, I was in a uh, um, philosophy class called um, uh, Philosophy of Religion, and then the subtitle was The Problem of Evil. And the professor, when before we were about to read this, uh, she apologized for the content. And uh, so 20 years later, I, I um, apologizing for the content too. It, it's, uh, it's very troubling because he'll go into uh, the details of, of the uh, uh, kids getting um, uh, the experience of evil, the tortures, the, uh, the, all the uh, terrible negative things that were done. Um, and, and so, yeah, so be, be prepared to that, for that when you listen to it. Uh, it it's, it's quite disturbing. And, and um, that, that is essentially the, the point he, he is getting at, he being Ivan, when he's, um, when he's telling this to his brother, who sort of accepts this idea of, of, um, of there might be a, a justification, or at least has certain premises, such as, as God is the creator, God is all powerful, um, um, God is ultimately in control. And, and, um, and therefore you have to explain evil. And a lot of people try to explain evil in different ways. Uh, there's uh, free will, there's um, maybe um, in, in the next life, there'll be punishment and reward. Um, and, and there's a variety of things. There's this idea of, we don't know it's beyond our comprehension, but there is a reason for it. And, and there's many different things. And, and Ivan feels particularly that these um, descriptions of evil that he is describing um, are too great and, and too significant and too disturbing for those answers to, uh, to really matter, to make sense, to be philosophically convincing. And, and that's, that's why he goes into such detail about the disturbingness of the evil, because he does not feel that any of these um, theodicies uh, provide justification. And, um, and so at the end, he says, suppose um, after all of these uh, children have been tortured, um, there's sort of like a, uh, a heavenly scene in which, um, and you get lots of biblical language, like uh, the enemies, you know, the, the lamb will lie down with the lion, the uh, person who's done someone else wrong, they will uh, make up with each other and everything will be grand. There was this, this grand plan all along um, uh, for all this evil. And, and at the end, it'll all be revealed to us. Um, he, um, he being Ivan, he says, uh, even if that's the case, I, uh, and, and you'll listen to this toward the end in, in the, uh, in the uh, audio file, I don't want to participate in that kind of reality, right? If, if uh, there is a God and God created the world, and uh, and God put all of these um, uh, events that sort of led to this this final um, point where everything's understood. If it if it if that includes the uh, suffering of these innocent children, I I don't want to uh, be a part of that. And he says I would uh, give back my admission ticket to this uh, universe being created. And then his brother. Um, uh, Aosha says, "Well, that's rebellion," and they and um, and they uh, get into a bit more of a debate about that before going into the uh, next book, which is entitled "The uh, Grand Inquisitor," which is also uh, another uh, quite interesting part of the uh, Brothers Karamazov. So that's the word. Uh, that's that's why the the um, section, the book section, is called uh, rebellion. It's it's that concept. It's that we suppose the world was created uh, by a God uh, who has the ability to stop evil um, and is just and wants to stop evil and is loving and would also like to stop evil and has the foreknowledge that evil is going to happen. Meaning that, that uh, there's this God that is in control, but for whatever reason, some, some grand plan that we can't comprehend allows the evil to happen. Um, he, he does not want to participate in that. And so his not wanting to participate in that is what is known as rebellion. And that's, that's how the uh, uh, section is titled. Okay, so, so that, that's the first point to be made about uh, this, this section. Okay, 
The, the second, I think, is, is equally uh, philosophical, but in a different way. And this is more the way in which um, the thinking Socratically text uh, uses it. Um, if we can't justify um, uh, there being any type of divine Given, given the problem of evil, right? So one one way is is um, is to say something like, um, because there's such radical evil, we uh, we um, can't uh, we can no longer believe in this concept of God. Uh, one one um, philosophical worry there might be: um, Does that remove former objective notions of morality? And we've heard uh, speakers. Um, say something equivalent to that uh, when we when we listen to a video by uh, William Lane Craig, for example, he kind of makes that point. He says, well, if there's no God, then then um, there's no uh, there's no value. There's no meaning. Uh, morality is just subjective and there's no uh, moral order. The very acts that we are um, appalled by, we also uh, can't have uh, objective moral grounding to condemn. So one one uh, idea might be something like, do you agree with that? Do you see flaws in that? How how does this idea, um, experiencing uh, in through through the reading an evil so great that it uh, removes this idea of the divine? What what would that do to the nature of morality? So so we all agree that that the uh, acts that we're going to listen to are 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 sort of like the worst evils imaginable. Um, but how how um, uh, do we do we uh, justify that, or do we have to justify that? All all of this has to do with the uh, the nature of morality. Uh, does uh, a work like this, a section like this in the rebellion, does it um, um, sort of add cogency to the idea of uh, moral objectivity in the sense that you say, oh, this is obviously wrong. Or, or does it, uh, in a sense, add um, add cogency to the idea of of moral relativity? So this could be another aspect of the question to to ponder. And lastly, another way to um, to sort of get around this uh, this problem of of the uh, absence of the divine, given such a severe problem of evil, is to um, look for like a universal uh, objective rationality to explain what is right and what is wrong. And this is another thing the book tries to suggest when it says uh, the general, um, they, they just refer to him as the general in the story. He's the individual that, that gives the order uh, for the dogs to tear apart the child. Uh, one of the questions says something like, what would you say to try to convince uh, the general that his actions were wrong or something like that? And, and I think that you can approach it that way, but it, you also um, might want to look at uh, the full context of what's going on. Uh, we have acts that are described as sort of like the worst evil acts. Uh, then we have the questioning of um, divine, the existence of the divine uh, divine morality, which would be objective. Then we have this um, result, perhaps, of a moral subjectivity, where that might lead one to say what's right uh, to one person is right for them, and what's right for another is right for another. And then this um, may lead to different questions. So, um, so I think perhaps we will uh, leave the video here, uh, in in the sense where. Um, we, we have a lot of different ways to react to how a, a story like this uh, influences the philosophical questions about the nature of morality. And, and uh, so that is the, uh, the question to answer. And I encourage you uh, all to, to listen uh, through to the uh, entire rebellion chapter. If you want to continue on to the uh, the Grand Inquisitor, that audiobook is also uh, or audiobook section is also available. All right, take care, um, and um, uh, hope to uh, I'll um, enjoy reading your responses soon.